Thank you for tuning into our show. I'm Jai Sugra. And I'm Janet Miranda. We're your hosts of Motivations. Our show is all about bringing resources to the public in hopes of inspiring positive change in the lives of viewers. Our topic today talks about taking the first step towards a big transformational journey in many facets of our lives by learning some essential life skills. Have you ever wanted to learn how to dance? Or maybe you forgot about a childhood dream like acting or maybe you wish to turn your passions into a thriving financial business. Unfortunately, most of us are not taught how to accurately fill out our taxes, develop financial literacy, or even practice proper nutrition at an early age to help guide us in the right direction. According to an article published by CNBC in May of 2019, 62% of millennials say they are living paycheck to paycheck, and only 38% feel financially stable. That is a staggering amount of people living with a great deal of uncertainty. More of us could use valuable insight about how our complex financial system works so that we can create more ease in our lives. We here at Motivations believe there's so much more mental flexibility when we develop awareness and gain knowledge. For example, learning open, nonviolent communication, especially on our impulsive social media platforms, and using our listening skills to try to understand the true meaning of what others are saying can vastly improve our world. Learning how to pause during a busy day and sit still with yourself is another tool that is vital for living a healthy, balanced life. Decision making and problem solving is completely different when we're coming from a place of clarity. Emotional intelligence, internal confidence, and being a personal advocate of what you believe in are vital. We here at Motivations believe in taking personal responsibility for our actions. When we view our problems in light of the bigger picture, we get the bird's eye perspective. Problems can be viewed through the lens of possibilities. This allows for meaningful shifts in perception to open up. Our woes are opportunities for growth. I'm grateful to speak with our guest today and hear real life stories from adventures and consciousness that share tools that can open up our hearts and expand our minds. We hope you at home are just as excited as we are. So thank you again for tuning in. Let's introduce our first guest now. In our next interview, we sit down with the accomplished songwriter, musician, arranger, producer, author, and president of Cool Guy Music and Miracle Music Inc. He's worked with artists such as Robert Anthony Plant from Led Zeppelin, Sammy Roy Hager, AKA the Red Rocker, John Lennon's son, Sean Lennon, the Beach Boys co-founder, Al Jardin, Neil Joseph, Sean from Journey, Meredith Brooks, and the Muppets. He's also wrote his own personal memoir and songwriting textbook entitled, Do What You Love Songwriting. Originally from Dumont, New Jersey, with over 40 years of industry experience, his talents continued to give him the ride of his dreams. For over 20 years as an NYU professor of songwriting, he continues to give lectures and master classes throughout the world. He also writes for the Huffington Post. Here is the one and only Larry DeVoskin. Welcome to Motivations. I'm your host, Jai Sugram, and today it's a tremendous honor for me to have on the show one of my mentors and a really good friend and a guide, Larry DeVoskin. Larry, welcome to the show. Boom. Uh, we're excited today to talk about overcoming anxiety, obstacles, and depression, and lining with your personal interests. Larry embodies lining up with his interests as a musician and doing what his, he loves. His business is all about doing what he loves. So, Larry, welcome to the show. Thank uh, you. You've worked with some of the biggest names in music, Paul McCartney, uh, MGMT, the Beach Boys, and... Here you are to share some of your experience and your journey with us. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And I do want to say to those watching that if I am his mentor, he's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a rock and roller. And, you he's know, being humble, folks. I'm being very humble because, you know, most people in their profession have a tagline like dedicated to children or health. But in my profession, the tagline is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And so I think that, uh, as they say, a lion in the Serengeti, if they survive the dry season, they're a success. And I think reaching my age, doing what I love, is a symbol of success. And being alive and well. And being alive and well. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I was very fortunate. I, I 
chose something very early on that was my passion and that most people say is a hobby, which is playing music. And I had a bit of an obsession. I would sit home and play eight hours a day studying classical music. My friends would come over and say, oh, there's a party, there's a this, there's a dance. And I'd say, no, I'm going to practice. And they'd say, oh, you're, you're so boring. You know, you don't go out. But by freshman year in high school, my band was playing at the freshman class mm -hmm. reception. And everyone was coming to see me as the entertainment. And it was the Cinderella syndrome. They looked me, at me on the stage and they said, how did that guy get up there? Mm -hmm. Practice makes perfect. We are reformed in the flames and the effort of practice, for sure. So uh, let me tell you about, uh, I've taught music at NYU for 15 years, songwriting. And the students come up to me and they say, I didn't just learn about chords or melodies. I learned about life. You've taught me these principles of living that apply to anything and not just music. And uh, for years, people were saying, write a book, do something. And I thought, you know, I'm too busy, I don't have time, I don't write, but I, I did. And the book, Do What You Love, Songwriting, outsold my entire music catalog of 30 years. By the way, I didn't work with Paul McCartney. I just oh. met him because I've worked with Al Jardine of the Beach Boys. Of the Beach Boys. Okay. I want to clarify that so there's no false news He going hangs on. out with all the big wigs. So, because Paul <clears throat> is a fan of the Beach Boys, we, we coagulate together at things like the Grammys. But to get back to the point, I started thinking about anything that's a hobby for one person is actually a profession for another. Your profession is being a, a mentor and a guide for health, wellness, fitness, and yoga. So that for some people is their hobby, but for you it's your profession. So I started looking at all my friends and I thought, here's an opportunity. The world is so troubled right now. There's so mm -hmm. many challenges that people realize like life is short I better start doing the thing that brings me joy even if it's not what I do to earn a living I can do it for just for my own fulfillment and so I started asking friends of mine who teach singing would you like to do like a do what you love video that's not just a TED talk or something but really where you instruct people and then they they you quiz them and that goes back and forth. So you find masters in each field to represent that field so someone can model their experience maybe? Exactly, okay. exactly. And, and the thing is that's different about, let's say, some of these other things. You can look online and find a million instructional things on YouTube. They're low quality. But our thing is based on principles, life principles. Okay. Again, so you can apply them to any different area of life. So I've already lined up uh, a friend who's a famous chef, a friend who's a famous fashion designer, a friend who's a famous photographer, I hope we have a friend here who's a famous yoga instructor. And the idea is to help people, the idea of do what you love in essence is to help people have a more fulfilling life, focusing on the things they love. And we're, we're launching it and it's going like a rock uphill all by itself. I'm thinking of your example. You were lucky to, to find what you did and somehow that discipline to practice while everyone else was fooling around helped you get on that stage and they're like, how did he get there? They didn't see all those hours of practice. What would you say to a young kid out there that has a passion, but the parent is whispering in their ear more about careers that are not in the arts or financial stability? How do you get to that point or, or make that decision that this is what I'm going to put my heart, soul and everything into? It's a great question, and I'll tell you, and this is just for me, I say people don't try this at home, like one of those TV warnings. I uh, knew that if I had a fallback position in life, I would fall backwards. Because okay. the minute things got tough, I'd be like, this is too much. So, you know, I, I joke around, say some people commit murder and they go to prison for life. I committed music, and I've gone to the music business for life. <laughs> and that thing about it is that yeah, there were times when I couldn't pay the rent, when I was behind on bills, right. when I had people just saying, you know, you can't stay in this apartment. But, you know, it's sort of like necessity is the mother of invention. In really moments where I thought there's just a wall in front of me, suddenly a door would appear. And mm -hmm. it's, this, it's this faith. You know, people who start companies, it could be... Kentucky Fried Chicken, it could be Apple Computers. You know, you go out into the world and everyone says, don't do that, that's a dumb idea. You know, I've worked with the Beach Boys for years and they told me that when they started, they played like at a, a little campfire on the beach and people came up to them and said, guys, 
first of all, you can't sing. <laughs> you're all ugly. And for sure, you're never going to make it with a name as <laughs> dumb as the Beach Boys. A year <laughs> later, they were number one, and the Beatles were number two on the charts, and the rest is history. So I really feel like you have to have some kind of inner compass and know that even if you fail, at least you really tried. Yeah. And there's a balance. You know, I used to look at just doing my solo career as my career. And anything else, helping someone with their song or teaching a kid was outside of that. Now I realize that it's all spokes on the same wheel. If I'm being of service to other people mm -hmm. and to the planet, I'm, I, I've had a successful day. What's the role, Larry, of, uh, for you in mentors? Like there are times that you've said inevitably when you are a business, you know, it's not I'm a businessman, I am a business man. We yeah. are the business. We're the yeah. face and the wheels of the business. What's the role for those sticking points of, of a mentor, someone that has trod the path before you, that can maybe stand on the mountaintop and look down at an oblique angle and say, hey, maybe try this. Have yeah. you had people like that, or just did you have to will your way through the dark spots? It's a lost art that's so important to have mentors. And all along the way, I had people who shared in five days or five weeks what took them five years to learn. And so the idea in all maturity, in all adulthood, is you gain certain knowledge and wisdom, you climb the ladder, and then you help other people up the ladder. Otherwise, it, it, it gets stale and stagnant. And that, I, it's a very important thing. The other day, I, I was interviewing a kid that stepped up to me to be a mentor, and I told him um, that the quality that I, I was attracted to in him was the hunger. Like, he just had raw power. He doesn't have a father in his life. He's not sure who his father is. And that, that energy, his hunger, and my stability, and seeing myself, my youth, in him was what made me give him a break and said, okay, you can come on board and learn from me. You have to be an asset to my life. And I feel like young people looking for a mentor today shouldn't be soft about approaching it. They should go really as, as how can I benefit this person's life, make their life easy. There is that energy of master disciple submission that I think some of the millennials are missing. Like they want it to be sort of handed on to them. Like, what do you think of that energy of, who, well, how would you take a kid? I, I want to ask you about all these things. <laughs> what are these things? This is sort of like a plastic. Did you get this at like this one is, of these this, five this, and dime places? This is to focus my mind you know? and balance my chakras. Yeah. I'm a master of energy what, what control. Chakras? What chakras and, do you have? And uh, the subtle energy that flows throughout my system in order to control my mind and direct my energy. And, and what about these are called anchors, and I use them. Much like the tattoo is a symbol, it's training my subconscious mind, like the Nike symbol that goes, just do it, just do it, get up and just do it. This is like, it's all one, it's all unified, don't worry, don't stress, trust the moment, it's well, happening what about now. your socks? Didn't your mama tell you to wear socks? My mama didn't raise no fool. Uh, this is... Uh, the just, older hipster look. I'm just trying to break it up here. A little humor goes a long way. You know, way a in little, life. little. Uh, a little humor goes a long way. A little, a little humor but, has you know, a lot of mileage. To answer your question yeah. more seriously about mentors and mentorship, especially, you know, I can't speak to other professions. People are probably, in my imagination, more serious when they're studying yoga or medicine. But in music, people have a lot of cliches in their mind that they have to be pure artists and there's a Van Gogh syndrome. If I don't succeed, but I'm true to myself, I'll be famous one day. And I, I always tell people, the only thing standing in the way of you and success is you. Right. Like, get out of the way. And I can't tell you how many people that I work with who are, have no experience and no success and no track record who know it all. And then I often will work with somebody who's really professional, like who's had hits, who's been renowned in the world for years. And, and they just show up and they say, tell me what to do. I'm your instrument. Guide me. Direct me. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm on Saturday Night Live after this. I got to go. You know, they're, they're at a professional level where they're not so attached to all of these sort of definitions that don't really mean they anything. They have a great attitude. And yeah, yeah. They're, just, they're just open, you know. People talk about art and what makes a great artist. You know, the Beatles had a manager who came in and said, you know, lose, lose the, the boots and the leather jackets. I want you to put on like a little sport jacket with a little tie. And they didn't just say, well, no, this is our image. We're like in 
leather motorbike boots and leather jacket. They just said, oh, okay, right. sure. And boom, they were on top of the pops and then they were you know, on the top of the charts. We're gonna round it off now, and, and you touched on something about cultivate, about getting out of your own way. Yeah. So what are three quick things someone can do to get out of their own way? Sometimes we're bogged down by anxiety, guilt, depression, or bad mood. So what are three things that someone can do to get clear and centered in their life if they wanna pursue their passion and do what they love? Well, I really have to say that it's, it's several things. One is just say yes until you have to say no. And as simple as that sounds, it's much harder than it seems. Say yes to what? Say yes to opportunity. You know, when people, you know, there's a saying that sometimes you want to get in the house and you're knocking on the front door, but there's a window right next to you that's open. Climb in the window. And I mean that symbolically. Just find your way in. Right. You know, some people say they want to be rock stars. Well, I'll start writing songs for someone or start playing in someone's band first. Just find your way in and do that thing. Uh, number two is I look at life from the other person's eyes. I don't look at what I can get from you or what you have that I want. I look at what I have that may, will make your life better. And when you show up in that way, everyone wants to be your friend and hang out with you because you're cool. And number three, it's, it's you are the company you keep and like-minded people. Absolutely. Be around like-minded people. I think that that's really important. For me, with Do What You Love, you know, my colleagues are people who have overcome tremendous obstacles. I have a friend of mine who's a fashion designer, Nick Graham. He started this company, Joe Boxer. And it's a great story. He just, he needed underwear, so he started printing dollar bills on these shorts. The IRS came one day with a warrant and said, we're confiscating counterfeit money. He said, counterfeit money, I have a bunch of underwear. They took it away and, and sent him a letter that said cease and desist from the Internal Revenue Service. He started printing cease and desist letters on underwear. A radio station heard about it, told the story, and then 10,000 people wrote in and called him and said, I want this cease and desist underwear. And a, a multi-million dollar company was formed. He once tried to put a big mustache on the Statue of Liberty, like get a little prop plane and build like this gigantic mustache and fly it right in front of the Statue of Liberty and then take a photo. And the, and the Parks Department found out about it, shut it down, but the publicity about it was incredible. I hang out with this guy because he's a genius. He may be crazy, but he's a genius and that feeds all of my other business okay. enterprises because you have to think outside the box. There is no box anymore. There is no box, and that's the psychology of success. I want to talk about what we do when we're alone. I'm going to give three tips to you young people at home in the, the dark corners of your own mind. Wake up early, 4 to 7 a.m. That's the sattvic, reflective part of the day. Everyone else is sleeping. Everyone's sleeping. Wake up early. Number two, work out. Take care of the body, the instrument of perception. Take care of the mind with a little bit of meditation every day. Focus the mind, focus the body. So get it right. And <laughs> this guy here has got the psychology of success with climbing through the window. Don't bang down the door. Larry, yeah. where can people find all of these resources, the media, is where can they find you and your work and contribute to what you're doing? Well, that's, thank you. Um, we are putting together now a, uh, a really wonderful, enlightening, and fun uh, video series, and we're gonna be starting to have live events. So people can just sign up to know when we're doing something and when things are coming out at DWYL, which stands for do what you love media.com. There's just a little landing page with some free videos, some free information. So it's D like David, uh, W like water, Y like yellow, L like love, media.com. And people can find out. And we're doing that very soon. And I hope you're going to be part of the team because you have really inspired me. You've inspired a lot of people around the world. I, I watch you travel around the whole world in the summer. And... Uh, and it's a wide open thing. I, I, I just think right now there's so much negativity in the world that anyone who adds positivity is just, is a gift to mankind, not, not to sound pretentious, but. The earth needs the best to shine from each one of us. And you've heard from one of today's masters, a good friend of mine, a mentor. Uh, we'd love to have you back on the show another time, Larry. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned guys for our next guest. Take care. Thank you, thank you.
In our next interview, we sit down with life coach, spiritual teacher, and certified functional medicine health coach. Her desire to dive deeper into her own growth, gain clarity on her purpose, and take aligned action in her life started back in 2013 when she fell in love with wellness. After experiencing a whole slew of symptoms like migraines, acne, digestive issues, and extreme fatigue, she traveled the world from Thailand to Spain to Prague, finding her calling amongst being a wife and a mother. She believes your body is a messenger and her body was desperately trying to tell her that her soul still sat inside. This ignited her to study mindset and human consciousness, working with shamans and plant medicines. She ultimately unlocked her intuitive gift as a challenger and clairvoyant. She decided to leave her corporate job and become a full-time entrepreneur. This brave and bold woman is none other than Meg Sylvester. Hi guys, welcome back to Motivations. I'm Janet Miranda and I'm here with Meg Sylvester. Mm. Meg, thank you so much for coming to the show. My pleasure. Can you give a little uh, information to the audience about who you are, what you do, how do you inspire people? Yeah. We wanna know it all. Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, I'm Meg Sylvester and I am deeply inspired by the idea of purpose. And so what I do is um, I work with clients, I speak, and I help people really step in and rise up to their calling. Um, and I do this through spiritual life coaching, through mindset work, and really working to uproot and overcome the subconscious and limiting beliefs that we have constructed. And, um, and when you say that, you mean like the, the um, subconscious, subconscious things that people have planted onto us, that labels and stuff? Or not necessarily that people have planted onto us, but the messages that we've chosen to receive and believe that are true about ourselves. So things like, I'm not enough. Things like, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't know enough to do what it is that you want to do. So limiting beliefs, meaning it's these beliefs that limit us from achieving our dreams and believing in our greatness. And so and, and society yeah. could be so tough on people. So I can understand why little girls and little boys at, you know, whatever age yeah. feel a type of way about themselves yeah. subconsciously. Yeah. And, you know, society puts these pressures on us to be perfect. So something that I dealt with for most of my life is this, you know, construct of perfectionism and, and this feeling that if I wasn't so perfect, then I wasn't worthy of my dreams and um, wasn't even worthy of taking the first step to align with my dreams. And so this idea of perfectionism was crippling. Whereas I used to think that it was something to be admirable, you know, I, um, I, I did a lot of work to, to recognize that perfectionism is just really fear and high heels. <laughs> and um, so, so yeah, I do a lot of work around, around these big major constructs that we we put on ourselves, you know, that, that really stop us in our tracks from, from walking the path of who we are meant to be. Meg, and I really appreciate all of the tools and stuff yeah. that we've shared offline. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this segment, um, we'll, we'll post up your, um, your website yeah. and where people can find additional information on mm -hmm. Meg Sylvester. But if you can, for, for maybe two, three minutes, if mm -hmm. you can just tell the audience, uh, you know, some motivational heart speech from your own self, how one can overcome some yeah. of those um, paintings of oneself, if you will. Yeah, yeah, so um, a message that I'd like to give all of you who are out there watching this is to recognize that you are not the victim. You are not the victim of the circumstances that are happening to you. Life is happening for you, and every challenge that you, you come across, every obstacle, it is guiding you to become your best self. It's guiding you to, to shift your perception and to overcome. And so the more and more you can shift from being the victim to the lighthouse, the more you are able to really successfully walk down the path of your dreams. And so I want you to ask yourself any time that you're feeling down, any time that you feel like you're not good enough, is am I looking through the lens of being a victim? Am I looking through the lens of life is happening, is happening to me? and it's hard and poor me? Or am I taking inspired, empowered action to overcome and to grow and to transcend through these challenges? So you are not the victim. Thank you so much. And yeah. can you just share, uh, we, we only have about a minute or two, yeah. but could you share some tools that folks can do when they're 
experiencing a feeling that's not the greatest, if you will. Yeah, yeah, so I am a firm believer in the 90 second roll. And that means in order to heal it, you have to feel it. And so we've been taught to really suppress and to push down our emotions and to say, I'm fine. Um, but if you're not fine, give yourself at least 90 seconds to, to let this emotion surge through you so that you can release it and really recognize it for what it is and heal from it. So this 90 second rule, you know, just, just take that and give yourself the time and the space to feel your emotions. Oh man, we are so yeah. blessed to yeah, have yeah, you thank here you, today. Thank you so thank much. You so much thank, Meg. You. thank you for tuning in and watching our show. We hope you truly enjoyed it. Tune in on our next episode where we discuss the important topic of wellness as we sit down with personal trainer Eric Potempa and holistic life coach and author Caitlin Margaret. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, be sure to watch them on our YouTube channel. Be sure to follow us on all our social media pages and contact us today. We'd love to hear from you. Like us on Facebook and tell us your thoughts about the show. We want to hear from you. Follow us on Instagram and leave a comment about today's show. Tweet us what topics you would like for us to discuss in the future on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that little bell so you can get the instant notifications on when our exclusive content is released. We can't wait to hear from you.